magnified, oh God. Come on, lift up those holy hands and just bless him. Father, we thank you for this morning. This is the morning that you have made, that we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that you have made, that we may rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we honor you for this week and this weekend. Thank you, Jesus, for your kindness. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and for your grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Master. Thank you for loving us as your own. Thank you, Master. Thank you for remembering us in coming to the cross and dying for us, oh God. We thank you. Lord, we honor you. Now we can come boldly into your presence. Now we can come boldly into your presence. Now we can call you Abba Father, Abba Father, our Lord, our Master, our King. Father, we come this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, coming to you, Abba, Father, asking that you will come and help us, asking that you will come and lift us, asking that you will come and lead us by your sweet Holy Spirit, asking that you will come and guide us and help us, Lord, as we head into the next three months. Lord, we know that we know that we have been in your presence. Lord, we know that we know that our lives have been blessed and we will never be the same. We will never be the same again. We have come to worship you. We have come to honor you. We have come to pour out our love upon you, O oh God. We pray, King of glory, that you and you alone will be honored this morning. We pray, King of glory that you alone will be glorified this morning. We pray King of glory that you alone will be worshipped this morning. We acknowledge you dear Holy Spirit. Thank you for such a beautiful morning. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your kindness. We pray for everyone that is watching us online. We pray for everyone that will listen to our voice this morning. We pray for everyone that needs a miracle. We pray for everyone that needs a breakthrough. We decree and declare that this is your day. Your life will never be the same again. To the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a big hand clap. Come on, give him a big hand clap. Come on, give him a big hand clap as we walk up the worship team to come and lead us this morning. Hallelujah! Hey. Come on, clap, 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 cl
There was a snake inside my home. That's when you know that we have contended. Amen. How they saw it, I don't know. How one of my girls saw it enter the bedrooms, I don't know. But our God is mighty. Our God is mighty. Yes. Our lives our destinies have been redeemed. Yeah. And of course, the enemy cannot take it lying down. Amen. Amen. So if you don't believe that the last two weeks we've been contending, I'm here to testify. Amen. Amen. I called an army from a house of revival. I said, who have been praying? Yeah. Come! They came out with sticks. I said, oh my God, are we going for a battle? But we were going for a battle. Amen. Amen. And when they entered my girl's room, <laughs> praise the Lord. I bless the Lord for Clovis, for Sam, for Gustav, for Moses and Ernest. They entered, they told my girls, close this door. And I just had the pounding, pounding, and they came out with a snake. So I bless the name for his mighty hand. I bless the Lord, for he is mighty, for he watches over us 24-7. The Bible says, he that watches over us neither sleeps nor slumbers. His word is true. So today, we are rejoicing. Today, we are taking our positions. Today, we are not contending because we've, it is finished. Yes. It is already done. Yes. It is finished. It is already done. We are here to rejoice yes. in the finished works of the Lord. We are here to declare His glory. We are here to declare His mighty hand. We are here to declare somebody rejoice in the King of Kings. take it to another level. Amen. Yeah. We just want to lift the name of Jesus high in this place. Yes. We want to lift the name of Jehovah high in this place. Yes. Come on somebody find some space. Find some space because we are going to dance. We're going to lift his name on high. Hallelujah. Come on let me see some movement. Let yes. me see some movement in the house. Everybody dance. Come on. Lift his name high. Say. Lift you up. We lift you up, we lift you up. We lift you up, we lift you up. Hey, we lift you up, we lift you up. We lift you up. From the rising of the sun to the setting down of yes. the same, we will raise our voices high. One thing we ask of you, yeah. one thing that we desire. As we worship you, Lord, come and change our life. This is one thing. One thing we ask of you. One thing that we desire. One Lord. thing that we desire. As we worship you. As we worship you. Come and change. Lord, come and change our life. Yeah. Arise, arise, arise. Take your place, be enthroned, be enthroned. I wanna pray, I wanna pray. 
Now testify to your neighbor. 
shed its name. Tell it to bow down to the King of glory. Tell it to bow down to the Lord of lords. Every enemy, every limitation, every stronghold, everything that seeks to exalt itself above the name of the Lord shall bow to the King of kings. The lion of the tribe of Judah is roaring like a lion. He's roaring like a lion. You've got to declare every enemy. Declare that thing that has tormented you. That thing that has been holding you. The enemy will bow. in Lusoka. So help me God. Somebody needs to find me the version for Lusoka. I don't know what's happening, but whatever it is today, creation. Amen. In Lusoga it says, now you'll forgive me. But as I was asking the Lord, how do we? He said, maybe do it in different languages. So that people may understand that creation is groaning. It eagerly awaits for the manifestation of his sons. 
It says, Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 We will do this. In Unyankole, he says, Zahawakuma, and we hang up your Nabitura. That's a genius of Hanga Nechihika. Kumarishala Nabe. God is waiting for the manifestation of his children. Of his children. God is waiting. In Swahili, he says, Vivi Vyote, Vinangochea.
are chosen. We are kings, we are priests. Some money, Richard.
Father, we know that you who has drawn them into your presence, you have a word for them. Be glorified in this house. Oh, we thank you. Come on, give him a big hand clap. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, reach out to somebody and welcome them. Make them welcome. Make them welcome. Thank you so much, worship team. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Make them welcome. Make them welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Let's give the worship team a big hand clap. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and indeed be glad in it. For the Lord will rise up at Mount Perizim. And he will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon. That he may do his work, his awesome work. And bring it to pass, and bring to pass his acts, his unusual act. This last week and this weekend, we have believed God to see him arise, to see him do his work, his unusual work, his awesome work, to bring to pass his act. His unusual act. And we are so thankful to God. This far he has brought us. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for the man of God. Apostle Emmanuel Monda.
he's here this morning. He graciously allowed to come and spend the week in Kampala. He is extremely, extremely busy, extremely sought after. He had to travel back to Bujiri last uh, Saturday and struggle to be back here last night. And the devil is in trouble. So is his mother-in-law. Because he wanted to, to resist him to come back. Hallelujah. And the Lord released armies to go and pick him up from Ginger. Until the devil surrendered. And we know that the devil is surrendering this weekend. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap. He is a dear friend. He is the chairperson and the founder of Busoga Revival Mission, a team that is doing an amazing work in the region of Busoga. And I believe that God has raised him for such a time as this. He is the presiding apostle of a tower of revival in Bujiri. Amen. And above all things, he is my friend. Hallelujah. He is God-fearing, a man of God, and he is on a mission. Praise the Lord. And this morning is here. So I'm going to ask you to kindly rise up on your feet. Let's clap our hands. Let us rejoice as we make welcome Apostle Emmanuel Mwanda. I know that there are people watching us from Asia. I know that the people watching us from the U.S., from the East African region, from Europe, and our lives will never remain the same. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Once again, let us lift our hands to Jesus. Lord, you who dwell in eternity, we are the works of your hands. We are the clay, you are the potter. We have come that your will be done in our lives, oh God. Touch somebody, change somebody tonight, that your name may be glorified, oh God. Jesus, you say, let your light shine that the world may see your good works and glorify Father in the heaven. We give you praise, Lord. Holy Spirit, without you, we are nothing. Without you, I can say nothing. Minister to us. Minister to the nations. Those who are watching on online, minister to them wherever they are, oh God. Deliver somebody because you send your word and heals our diseases. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, King of glory. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, we do pray. Give him a mighty hand clap. Amen. If you want to remain standing, let us stand. Hallelujah. Ah, we had to begin from it is powerful to be in this place. My friend, my brother, my pastor, thank you for ever giving me opportunity to stand before the saints of God in the city. Amen. Praise and worship team. Keep it up. It is because you don't know what we are saying. But for us, we know what we are saying. Thank you. You people, you are blessed to have such a wonderful wash bars in this house. <laughs> also, we are blessed to have such men of God like your leaders in this place who are still focused to see the will of God be done. 
people, they make conferences to raise money to do ministry, in quotes. But for you, you do conferences to raise men and women to do ministry. <laughs> Amen. And for me, I can't take that for granted. My brother Patrick, whom I came with last, uh, this, uh, the last Sunday, last week, has been here in the conference. But by the time I reached Bujiri, everybody was asking, what did you do to Patrick? What did you do to Patrick? Patrick calls us and tells us, you people, what is in Kampala? You people, my life will never remain the same. My life will never remain the same. And for me, I give all that glory to God. You know, when you are in the thing, you may not understand that thing. But it is until when you are out of it that you may know how big and how beautiful it is. So, already I have one disciple changed. Amen. In fact, today I was supposed to come with a team of younger people. But because I was around here almost the whole week, it was hard to organize. But they wanted to be part of this conference. But next time, I think when you organize, I want also to be more organized. Amen. Amen. And I bring young, because for me, I'm after younger people now. I don't want to rehabilitate old men and old women. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I want to help the younger people that they may see visions and uh, also prophesy in their generation. Amen. Amen. For, us, I, for me, I do that work of dreaming on their behalf as they see vision and they do also prophesy. Amen. So I'm blessed I came with one of the young girls. She's uh, the lead of Scripture Union, one of the big school, secondary school. So for her, when I said I'm going with people, she got permission. She ran away from the school, and I found her home <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> but as Pastor said, we had a lot of drama last night. To reach here, it was by the grace of God, because I went to officiate a function in one of the branch churches. It was a powerful function of thanksgiving. And a younger pastor, what he did, he mobilized the whole land for thanksgiving, whether we were a Yuchi Dokita, whether we were Muslim. So the church was mixed up with the people who have come to thank God. You know, the fact is that that land was locked. It is like an island. There is no school, there was no church, there was no work, and there are many people but also they are in Uganda. Amen. Amen. So yesterday, it was a day to unlock the land. But after the ministry, because I wanted by nine to be in Kampala, when Patrick went to start the car, the car refused. He tried, he refused. It was around five. The car had jammed. Then, we called one of the best mechanic. He came. He disorganized the car. He didn't see any problem. He tried to, he, the car refused. I called Honorable Bulam. Honorable Bulam called one of the best mechanic here in Kampala. And he, they started now doing the work on Zoom, on, on, on phone. <laughs> Do this, I have done this. Try this, say so after everything, he said, now we need a computer. Can you get anywhere? Who, uh, we don't have a nice, we go to Ginger to come and read for us what is the problem. Now it was coming to eight. But I was deep, locked far in that village. So that's when, when Alan, I told him now the thing, it needs a computer to come and read this car. Say, now what is plan B? I said, I have to be in Kampala. By fire, by thunder. And I'm not coming in the morning, I'm coming. But even how to get out of from that village, there's no border border. So I called a friend, help me with your cart. 
I have just given it to your friend, Pastor Sawanya no Miracle Center. And he's using it tomorrow morning. I called another guy. He said that my car is good, but it does not make a reverse. <laughs> and oh, so I tried to get. So now that's when I said now. Alan said that no. Plan B. I'm coming. Get a car. Get a, get a walk coming out of that village. For me, I'm coming. The moment he said he's coming, <laughs> the younger man said no. This place, when Apostle was wedding, the, we recently there was a wedding, the, the bride and the groom, they almost fell here. They stumbled here. Maybe the problem is where the car is. We push it away. Patrick said, but this is a automatic. He said, no, if it will carry, we are going to carry it. The younger man came and pushed the car. After pushing the car, they started the car was okay. Now I said, ah, the car is, has started. Now, but it is not like, it looks as if it has a problem. But let us come. Finally, also these people, they were locked around it. <laughs> they were unable to reach Ginger. So we chose to drive the car. Up to now, we are driving the car. It has no any problem. So we know what the Lord is doing. And the enemy also knows what the Lord is doing. And we bless the name of the Lord. Amen. I believe we are possessing our possession. The moment there was a reinforcement, that's what I said, that is now violence. That's the language the enemy understands. The moment he knew that there is a, 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 a ground force coming. Pastor Michael said, Alan, you can't go alone. I have to go with you. The enemy lost. Amen. God has blessed us. And also I feel I'm blessed. So my daughter Kagoya, can you stand up? Maybe come here quickly before I say something. This girl is a wonderful girl. She fellowship in one of my friend's church. You know, I have many younger people I pastor, but they are not in my church. <laughs> oh, I mentor. She has been sent out of school seven times until the pastor rose up and went to intervene in her case because they don't want them to pray. They don't want fellowship in that school. But we thank God she has persisted. And now there is a breakthrough. And there is revival in the school. <laughs> People are getting saved. I was there and I saw hundreds. and hundreds. It is the biggest school in, in, in Nigeria. Where she is. So we bless the Lord. She, she has said no. Daddy don't leave me. You can go back and sit. One time you will come here to preach. <laughs> Amen. We have a God. We have our king. Isaiah 33 verse 20 to say that our God is a judge, is a lawgiver, is a king. Amen. Our God. And uh, whatever he's doing in our lives, Whatever the Holy Spirit is leading us into, that we may possess what belongs to us. What the Lord wants is that we may worship him. Because he's our king. There is no king who is not honored and worshipped as a king. Even the earthly kings. There is a system every kingdom has. There is structures and policies and principles made. But the fact is they want us or they want a subject to worship, to exalt, to honor the king in the kingdom. Even where we are standing in Uganda, there is a king. But if he can pass now here, you may find that some Baganda here you run away from church and go and see your king. Go and honor your king. Others prostrate down. Others shout. Others dance. 
because, uh, because of their king. But these things, they are just shadows of what we are supposed to do to the greater king, the king of glory. So whenever I come here and I found such a wonderful worship, I always bless the name of the Lord. But also God wants us to worship him with everything. Not only with our lips. That's why even Pharaoh, when he was resisting the children of Israel to go, to possess their possession, Moses couldn't allow. Even at a certain time, he said that, okay, you can go, but leave the, the girls and the women, the children, but you go. They said, but no, we want to go with our children. Now, I saw that young girl worshiping. I didn't know that they are already training another powerful worshiper. Eh? Those are the people that devil didn't want. Fire said they will not go. The children should do. Remain. And God said, no. I want also to come. They said, okay, they can go, but the sheep and the cows and the goats and the what? They... Moses said, no. Not even a hoof will remain. Everything. We have to go with it to worship our king. Praise be to Jesus. As we are worshiping, we worship him with everything. With everything. Whether your car, your house, your what, your money, everything. Praise be to Jesus. And that's why he's like saying, we have to pose. It is hard to worship. When you are not able. When the enemy has limited you. That's why you find that even men who are in the Bible and they did great things. The Bible says like David was a worshiper. But the Bible says had able men around him. God wants people to be able. You are supposed to be able when you have got your lot. When you have got your portion. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. You will not worship him when you have cancer. You will not worship him when you have diabetes. You will not worship him when you have, you have pressure. You will not worship I mean, the enemy want to put limit. You will not worship him when you don't have cash. Praise be to Jesus. Like now, me to be here. It involved many things last night to be here. Praise be to Jesus. So, as the Lord wants us to have our portion, he wants to eat the whole of it so that we may go and praise his name and worship him. Praise be to Jesus. Let us go in the book of Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 from verse 1. Now, when he concluded all his saying in the hearing of the people, he entered the camp now. And a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. I don't know whether it is English, whether it was the, somebody to be ready to die. <laughs> Amen. I don't know whether there are people also here who are saying I'm ready to give up. <laughs> I'm ready to surrender. I'm ready to die. But this one, my, according to my version, it say, he was ready to die. Verse 3. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent aiders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving. For he loves our nation. And has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I said to one, go. And he goes. 
and to the other come, and he comes. And my servant do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the, to the crowd that was following him, I say to you, I have not found such a great worshiper, a great faith, not even in Israel. Praise be to Jesus. The Bible is talking about a scenario of many events in a short time with different characters in a short time in this passage. And that's where I'm developing what the Lord has put on my heart. The Bible is talking about a centurion servant who was sick, ready to die. This centurion, he was not a Jew. This centurion was a soldier and <clears throat> he was from Rome. But because he has heard about Jesus, he had known about Jesus, and he had a servant who was so dear to him, who was so dear to his company, to his projects, to his businesses. He said, since I have heard about this man, my servant, I can't see him die. When there is a man called Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. He said, I cannot see my servant die. I'll go and speak the elders. And the elder tell Jesus about my situation, my challenge, something to be done. I want him alive. Amen. Servants of God. What are you doing for your master? Amen. What are you doing for your master? That can make him say, what can me, but I cannot allow my servant go through this. Are we faithful worshippers? Are we faithful to our king? Are we faithful to our master that he can live everything? And say, no, I will not allow this to happen. Because if I allow this to happen, my business is going to make a loss. I will be in a loss. I can't lose him. I can't lose her. What are you doing now for your master? That he can say, I cannot lose this person. The Bible says he had many. According to the explanation, he told that I'm a man and authority. And I have many guys around me. I can tell this and go, and he goes. Come, he comes. Do this. So he was not in a problem of human resource. But there was this particular one. He couldn't miss out. There was this particular one. He could be not comfort. He could risk. And he said, no. What come may? This one is not going. How are you contending? How are you contending? When we talk about contending, the first thing comes is warfare and prayer. But there are things you do which may not be warfare, but when you are contending. That your master cannot allow any evil to befall you. Cannot allow anything to happen to you because you are so valuable. He can lose others. The Bible says he went the elders. The elders went and told Jesus that the one this should be done to, he deserved it. Now look at this house. 
the servant is unique. The master is unique. These people, they are not even Jews. They told him, the one we are saying, he deserves. I don't know whether you interpret this into you, Ruth Sidon. The one we are saying this to be done, he deserves. Why? He loves our people. He has built us a synagogue. Yet he is a Roman man. He's a Roman soldier. He loves our people. But also has built for us. I'm just bringing to you another summary as we are summarizing our, our, our theme tonight. How we can also contend and we get a divine intervention. The centurion, much as he was not a Jew, when he came in the land of the Jew, he honored the king of the Jew. He worshipped the king of the Jew. Even when the Jew were not worshipping, he knew that the king of the Jew is the God of the heaven. The first thing I do for him, I build for him a house. Praise be to Jesus. I build for him a house so that the land can come and worship the king of the Jew. Amen. They guy said, the guy we are talking about, he deserves. He loves our people. The Bible says love never fails. Love covers all things. Love is patient. Where there is love, there is no law. Where there is love, there is no battle. Even when they rise up against you, they will fall. The centurion man loved the Jews. Remember that time, Israel was under torment of the Roman Empire. Was under Roman Empire. And the Romans were tormenting the Jews in their own land. But this one, he knew that there is a king in these people. There is a God in these people. And he chose to love the people of the Jew. And he did and built for him, for the king of the Jew, a house to honor him. Ask your neighbor, do you break the house of the Lord or you are building a house of the Lord? I'm saying... I don't know, I don't know, but you understand. Now, the editors, these are intercessors. These are, we call them, we call them what? Eh? There's another name we call, people who pray, you call them what? Eh? Prayer warriors. Amen. They represent the prayer. They went to God. They went to Jesus. And they started interceding for the centurion guy. <laughs> they were praying for him. There are things you will do and automatically you will have many prayer warriors on your behalf. There are things you will walk in and they will say, no, this one he deserves. This one, Lord. You remember even the Acts of the Apostle I, about Docas. She died and the guy said, no, she, she has raised up. And they started going and, you know, before the Lord said every good thing she has been. And at the end of the day, the Lord rose her up. So even it was the same thing with the centurion guy. That the elders went and started interceding for him saying, the one we are telling you, he deserves it. 
because he built for us this, he had done this for us, he is like this, he loves us, he loved our community. We, I'm like saying that even as we are going to walk in liberty and freedom and possession, there is a lifestyle we must have before God and before men. Which will be a guard for what you have in God. Which will be a guard for your portion. Like this centurion man. The guy went and said no. The one we are talking about, he deserved it. He deserved it. And the Bible says, when they told Jesus, immediately, he did what? He went with them. Let us look in Matthew chapter 15. You will see what I'm trying to say that you know. Jesus, much as this guy was not a Jew, he moved immediately and went with her. You hear this one. There's another woman who is not a Jew who had a similar what? Problem. Amen. And I want you to see how Jesus responded to this woman. Who didn't build a, a synagogue? Who didn't love the people of God? Who did nothing? Also, she went to Jesus. Are we there? Amen. Matthew 15, verse 21. 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to a region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciple came and urged him, saying, send her away. For she is crying out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except the lost sheep of the house of his wife. Then she came and worshipped him. Can you imagine? Saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread. It is not good. It is not good. When God says it is not good, <laughs> it is not good to get children's food and you throw it to dogs. Why? If you are not doing anything for the master, you are a dog. If you have nothing profitable to the kingdom, he look at you as a little. The centurion man, Jesus didn't answer a word. When they told him about the situation, he immediately rose up and went. He was not also a Jew. This woman also was not what? But behind her, there was no testimony. To be together. Amen. Amen. Or we take it there. Behind this lady, there was no testimony. Behind this lady, there was no one to defend that she deserved it. And when he was, they were, said, she was not even answering her. He was not answering her. He kept quiet about her situation. Until the lady became violent. The disciples are saying, why can't you send her away? She's crying for us. Instead of defending her, they just send, send her. Amen. At times we can go before the Lord and ask, who is that one praying? Who is that one crying? And just not answer a word. And then you become bitter. Because he has not answered a word. But also it's like saying, I can't get children's food. 
and give it to Lito. <laughs> Can we rise up? Can we rise up? That even before we go to the Lord, he's ready to answer us. He's ready to do something about us. Praise be to Jesus. When you have nothing profitable to give, also, he said, I honor whom honors me. Back to, to our scripture. I wanted to show that, that you know that heaven, even as we are praying to God, there is a principle. There are things God expects us to be well conversed with. You can't look around like for us who are in those places. At times you don't have what belongs to you. Last time I, I was going to to school, I think, or to church. And I found a young girl around 12 years. She had a uniform torn. You could see what is inside her. Going to a certain, I stopped her. I said, you girl, how much is a uniform at your school? She said, 25,000. And I was like, say, oh God, how can this girl really be comfortable among her fellow children? She's a grown-up girl. How can even a parent dare to see such a girl going naked to school? I said 25,000. I said, after school, pass home. I'm going to give you the money and you can buy what? The uniform. I, did, I think the girl couldn't may, maybe understand. I think she reached school for just 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a call that there's someone home calling you. I said, there's a younger girl here. I said, I don't know who is that one. Going back, the girl had come. I gave her 30,000. And the girl was extremely happy. The following day, the parent came to thank me, but I saw their able parent. What am I trying to say? You can't look at a thing you can handle and you ignore. Some of us, God has put us in a position that you can do something. You can't look at a situation you can help and you put a deaf ear or close your eyes. That girl is not at my school. Praise be to Jesus. But God is like saying, you know, looking for the people whose light is going to shine and the good works of God are seen and they glorify the name of the Lord. Because Jesus was acting immediately for this guy, the centurion, because of the testimony. Already the good works of God is shining around him. And they are glorifying God. People who had nowhere to worship, they have a place where they can go and worship their God. Jesus, that time, he didn't say, I have come for the lost sheep. He didn't make such a statement that for me, I'm here, I have come for the Lord. He said, he just immediately did what he went. So, I'm like trying to say that men and women of God, young and old, our generation, if we are going to change it, we have to act in the way we act differently. Praise be to Jesus. The other day we say that the Lord gives day by day. Our daily what? Bread. But if you find somebody is saving fees, like for example, my, my sister Sharon, saving school, university fee for her, for her daughter. But around you, there are children who have no books to go to school. But for you, you are saving fees for your daughter for university. Who bewitched you? <laughs> who bewitched you? 
Pastor Mike was saying the other time that who knows that after maybe many years the universe will be abolished. So if it reached there and by the time of that, you know, when the universe are abolished in Uganda, what will you do? Praise be to Jesus. Now, back, are we back to Luke chapter 7? The Bible says, then Jesus went with them. And when he was already, that is verse 6, already not far from the house, the centurion sent friend to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should come and enter my... I am not... What a great worshiper. I'm not worthy. Now, you see that controversy, contradiction. The elders who went to him said, the one we are saying is worthy. The one Jesus is saying, Lord, I'm not. I understand you. He said, for me, I'm not worthy. But these people say, you are worthy. I'm not worthy. That is worshipping. That's worshipping that king. Praise be to Jesus. You know, many things which have made us even to stumble, to fail us to serve our God, is to think we are worthy. Any small thing you do, you want to be recognized. Everything you do, you want to be rewarded. Everything you, you want to be advertised and tell everyone that ah, it is so and so. You are what this guy said for me, I'm not worth it. And it is like, you know, but they say this, I say you are worth it. No. No, I'm not worth it. I'm forgetting that verse where Jesus said that even after doing the work, don't count yourself worth. It is just a honor to serve God. If you are doing something here for God, don't count yourself to be so special. Don't count yourself to be so worthy. If you are cleaning the church, don't. It, whatever good work you are doing, don't tell us that you are worthy. What is also killing revival is because we are in a generation where people are competing to prove that they are better than so and so. Even men of God, they are abusing one another on radio, on TV. They are pulling one another down because others are thinking they are worth it. No one here is worth it. Don't lie me. That is why you find that even in church, you followers, you love men of God than Jesus. You honor men of God than Jesus. Because they lied to you that they are worth it. But I'm here to tell you, even those who are watching me, whether you watch it how many, after many years, I want to tell you, man of God, you are not worth it. You are not. It is only Jesus who is worth it. Amen. I tell you, there is a difference of loving God, serving God, honoring God, and fearing God. Not everyone who serves God will honor him. Not everyone who loves God will serve him. Oh, <laughs> you love him, honor him, but other people, the fear of God is no longer in our hearts, in some of us. And that's why we are doing things which even makes others to wonder. We used to be proud. By the way, when I was young, not young, a youth, I could not sit in a taxi and come from Kampala up to Bijiri without preaching the gospel. We felt proud of the gospel. We loved to preach the gospel. 
But there were two times I tried, they shattered me in that car. Because of the things happening and the world is watching. Now the enemy of the church, you may, find, you may not find him in a, a shrine. You may find that we are within us. Reason, we think we are fighting for glory, honor, and think we are worthy. You are not worthy. Even if you bring us money to buy the land for this, child, for this ministry, about 500 million, you are not worthy. You are not worthy. Never lie to yourself. If God convicts you to do something powerful, never, never think you are worthy. You are not worthy. So if we are going to contend, we must be faithful worshippers. We must be faithful worshippers to God. Not just thinking that we are, shall come and kick out demons and everything. They are principles. They are, they are guidance by the word of God, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, which will make us to inherit the land, which will make us take the kingdom. The elders went and told Jesus, the person we are talking about, he is worthy, he has a beautiful asset synagogue, he loves our people, he does this and this. And, and Jesus immediately said, okay, we go. Maybe he expected also the guy to come and say, Lord, I'm worthy because I built a synagogue. Lord, I'm... When he heard from far, he said that he's near. Go and tell him, I'm not worthy. He should not come and enter in my room. And even he said, I found myself not worthy to come and meet you. The guy himself, just meeting Jesus, he said, I'm not even worth it to meet you. And Jesus turned and said, ah, I have moved, but I have never seen this in the whole of Israel. I have never seen this. But Abasgade Muluata, Olavi da Dalanga, you are worth the Oleta Nakamaniro. Jesus, we feel is our boyfriend. We feel is our uncle. Oh, he, he, he's, what can I say? The way we take Jesus and his name. My God. People honor their pastors, but they don't have honor for Jesus. Yet he's the King of Kings. And he's the Lord of Lords. I'm saying, if God will open our eyes and we adore our king and we worship him above the people who worship their kings who are not kings, we will see that we are possessing because there is a ring and a force and a wall built around us by the heaven itself. By the heaven itself. Praise be to Jesus. So Jesus said, uh, verse, verse, verse 7. Therefore, I did not even find my, think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. So after doing whatever you are doing, in joy or in pain for the Lord. At times we give sacrifices. <laughs> Yesterday, I was seated in the cold, in the night stuck. And somebody came, are you going to Kampala? I said, I am going. How do you feel? I'm honored <laughs> by heaven to go through what I'm going through now. Because after Friday, I went back at night. I had a bad headache. I didn't sleep. Then in the morning, we read, drive back to Bujiri. From Bujiri, go deep in the village. Have no rest. And now, 
I'm confused. I don't know what to do, but I have to be in Kampala. Somebody was saying, now how do you feel? I said, I'm honored. <laughs> because I'm not worth them. I can't even complain over this. I'm not worth them. Hallelujah. I'm sorry for not kuba pikechi nko chandi babusi sawa guru. Men are quiet. They are like saying, ah, this kind of teaching. Jesus told his disciples when the guys started going one by one and told the rest, won't you also go? But Peter said he had nowhere to go. So if the others will go, and I have some two, three, who will welcome me back when I am invited, that is okay. But the thing is, I better tell you the things which is going to bring you total healing and total change. Amen. Some people, they just come. Jesus is not a witch. The thing is a magician. They just come in and say, Hey, I have chino chino ma, musumba teka kono, kono, on sabido, chikobe. Who are you? Yes, wa mukore dechi. I was telling you the other day how I had someone calling me after hearing my sermon. Now, yeah, you are saying God is a father. What kind of a father is that one? I have asked for him. Oh, for many years about this issue. I said, but what have you done for him? By the way, we are not even in exchange. We are not in exchange market. <laughs> Some people may think when you tithe, like how they tell you, bring this, God will bring you this. Who told you? Who told you that what you are bringing is yours? <laughs> huh? So we are like in a butter trade. We are in a business with Jesus. We are in a transaction. Let a name fall off. Somewhere I had somebody even asking for, you want to see the pastor? Have you come with a, a sin offering envelope? You begin with a sin offering envelope. Then that is you never get Now, how? What is the difference? Don't you think that you are worse than some people who used to say that the Catholic they do this and this? We are worse. And that is what you want. What amazing me. People they want to go and do their money. And bring the man of God and they for the sin offering and they pray for them. Again, they go back and they sin, they bring more sin offering. <laughs> you will not live a fruitful life. Praise be to Jesus. I want you to know this and you know it from the bottom of your heart that you are not worth them. There's somebody who came in my house in Lujiri and found that the children <laughs> jumping, they came to see the TV and even those who look after uncles <laughs> said, hey, up, bana, bana, you can leave these children to enter your house and they said, are they not children of God? <laughs> Now, when I send them away, I'm sending them to who? To the devil. Let us enjoy because it is, I'm not worth them. There's a time, <laughs> there's a time when things were tough, food was expensive, but you know, I have those youth, but at home, but they just come with a group of people. They come. Every day they are telling you the food is not enough. And now, 
Now long was asking, what are we going to do? I said, now when we send them out, where are we sending them? If the devil is looking for these younger people, and now the Lord is bringing them here to get shelter. Let us share whatever small we have. At times we share, me and Nalong, we miss, we take a tea. Ah. And when Prosper is around, you know, he's a heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So for us, we choose to take a tea and the rest eat. By the way, we buy, we buy food, rice, we buy 50 kilograms, 100 kilograms. Yes. And as I can go when I have not eaten. <laughs> but you are trying to preserve a generation. Because the homo, they are interested in these younger people. The way they are interested for you, God is bringing them to you. You say, ah, ah, I'm worth it. My house is so good. They can't enter here. They, anyway, I always ask my children to forgive me because I disorganize their program. Every, at times you may find everywhere they are visitors sleeping around. Because the adults even come and just come to sleep in a Kalina. The adults will say, ah, ah. How I want to sleep in that Kalina? I want to sleep in that. <laughs> so how God provide, you may not know. Because he give a daily bread. But the thing is, don't complicate the things of the kingdom. Don't complicate your life. I'm sorry if I'm hurting you, but don't complicate. Men who saw God, they didn't complicate things. They made life easy. But the centurion got opportunity for others to intercede. So when you read down, you'll find that the younger man got healed just out of a conversation. The situation was sorted at home. When people they are just in, on the road in what? conversation. The others are saying this man is worth it. The man is saying, I'm not worth it. Don't come in my room. I mean, things were like that. Jesus said, I have never seen this. By the time they reached home, the boy was okay. So, I began by saying, what are you doing for your master? That you need, you deserve a quick intervention. What are you doing for your master? That you deserve a quick intervention. Don't condemn yourself. But you must do something about it. Praise be to Jesus. We had one of our servants, uh, our, our member here, who got an attack. And the news went around. I'm sorry, I will use her name, Aunt Desire. But I tell you, there were people who were in Virginia who were fasting for her. Everyone was praying. Everyone was <laughs> No, 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 no. So when you are relevant to the kingdom, when you are relevant to your master, you will find that he will be able to be moved something to happen on your behalf. Like the centurion who couldn't see his master, his servant die. Amid the man he had, he said, this one will not die. I have heard of Jesus. In the end of the day, you will have righteousness, peace, joy. I hope my time is not, it's fast spent. Thank you so much. That's what I wanted to pass to you, that as we are celebrating, as we are entering into possessing our portion, the Lord has come down in this place this last week and this week. We want to go and do the things we have not been doing well. Amen. That you know, the heaven 
will we open. We will walk under an open heaven. We shall get protection, answers automatically from heaven because of our relevance. Because God also cannot see a profitable servant suffering. Let us stand up. Father, we give you praise. Lift up your hand to Jesus. King of glory, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you. We worship you. We exalt you, our king. The Bible said, Lord, you are our king. You are our judge. You are our law giver. We pray that, Lord, from today, our hearts will be open. The eyes of our understanding will be open. And we start, oh God, to worship you, to serve you, to honor you with everything you have blessed us with, with everything you have given us, oh God. We shall honor you with our bodies. We shall honor you with our hands, with our soul, with our spirit. We shall honor you with the words we speak. We shall honor you with our actions, with our works, so God. We shall honor you with the things, the possession you have given us, so God. The wealth, so God. The money, the resources you have put in our hands, so God. The opportunities you have put in our hands, so God. We shall honor you. We shall honor the king. We shall honor the king. The Lord, my master. That even in times of trouble, when we call you, you will answer. In times of trouble, when we call you, you will answer us, so God. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory, O oh God. Repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as your servant. Hammers on me where I have disappointed you. I come, Lord. I return to you with my whole heart. I want to serve you with everything you have given me. Holy Spirit, help me to understand and discern rightly things around me to the glory of the name of the Lord. Every force of darkness, every voice, every thought, which has been hindering me to do the right thing in the right place. Right now, I speak fire. I call angelical intervention in my life. Holy Spirit, flash out whatever evil inside of me. That from today, I'll be obedient to love you, to serve you, to honor you, to fear you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Give him a mighty hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Yes. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big, big hand clap. He is worthy of our worship. Praise the Lord. Just sit for a bit. Amen. 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 Thank you for, for coming this morning. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for Apostle Eman for the word that he has given us. Thank you so much. Let's just bless him with a hand clap. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many people are visiting us? You've never been here before? Just visiting for your first time? Oh, wow. Come on, come on. The people around them, please reach out. Four people. Hallelujah. Reach out. I need members to stand up. Get out of your feet. Get out of your seat. Go and welcome our visitors. Yes, give them a hug. You're most welcome. That is it. That is church. You're most welcome. You are important to us. 
We are glad that you came. Frank, I will you what I Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are most welcome. We are so glad to have you. God loves you. Thank you for coming. Praise the Lord. You are most welcome. This is House of Revival Church. Where I'm a member. And ever since I joined this church, <laughs> my life has not remained the same. So you are most welcome. If you do not have a church uh, that you belong to, you are welcome to make this church your church. And I'm telling you, you're going to love it. You're going to, this is just the beginning. This is just sampling. This is just the beginning. You're going to love it. You're going to grow. You're going to increase. Praise the Lord. So our sister Kate, is she around? Hey, you see that lady there? Yes. She's going to meet you shortly. So after you give your offering, you don't have to wait for anything else. Uh, she, you're going to go with that lady and she's going to meet you and tell you something more about our church. Hallelujah. So you're most welcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get a hold of our offering. Let's get a hold of our offerings. Um, you must be having an envelope somewhere. I think I had mine down here. Someone get it for me. Yes. Does it have money? Praise the Lord. So if, if you want to give via Momo Pay and, and Airtel money, it, the instructions are there. Otherwise, you can grab a, a hold of your envelope and we will pray. Man, this week, God has just been giving us nuggets for victory. Yeah. As a church, we are a worshiping church. We are a worshiping church. And one of the things God spoke to us when we were coming into the city was that the, the, the worship that he was receiving in this city was defiled. And I'm not afraid to talk about that. And you know, I find out that one of the churches that I was led to go to so that they mentor us in worship, the weekend, we, it was a Friday, we were going to go there on a Saturday with our worship team to go there so that these people can mentor us. God took me to the place on Friday in the spirit and asked me, he opened the door and asked me, is that what you call worship? Is that what you call worship? I had entered the place. In, the people could not see me. So I backed slowly, closed the door, and ran away. Today that church, which used to emphasize worship, which said God had called them to resource people to worship, have moved. Now their movement They've moved. They're the ones who wanted to go to be mentored. And so when we came in this place and we started to worship God for one hour, people would come and look at us like this. I said, what are you doing? Just sing two songs. Sing two songs and we sit and hear the word. We would worship until people sit. They are tired. We need to get a month where we just come and worship and go home. A full month. We can even write to you these sermons, four of them for the month, so you don't come. So God is a king. He has to be worshipped. I went to a church in Cupertino in San Francisco and they have to hire a, a, a guitarist. They don't have worshippers. They have to hire a guitarist. All the songs who are singing simple songs. He didn't know. He didn't know. So the, the pianist was the one who was who knew. So the pianist had to play another piano here, another one here to try and mix so that we get a service. And we had a revival meeting. We're believing God to be, for people to be healed. 
Hallelujah. We were believing God for people to be healed. Can you imagine? They didn't have worshippers. Where I went in, in, in uh, Los Angeles, this time round, when I, the pastor called me and said, Pastor Michael, do you know that after you left, there was one guy who is a, a Ugandan, a, a worship leader, three new people, Ugandans, have joined the church and they have joined the worship team. Three. And they've invited us to go there and do a worship rally. This is Los Angeles. It's a huge city. When you see like this, houses go like that. The thing is scarce. Praise the Lord. So there are shortcuts to this thing. And people have dreamt we are going to worship in stadiums. So better make money now. Our worship events will be costing a hundred million. One like this. One like this. I think we need to do one in Kamuli. This year. This year. We must do one in Kamuli. Me and my wife and my family, we are paying for yeah. Whether we sell my shoes, you go and count my shoes, go and count what? We will sell. This is the solution for this land. We've worshipped demons for a long time. That's why we are breaking them. And they are crying and they are saying, but you've been worshipping me, why are you chasing me away? We must make money and take worship to the nations. We must. We must. We must, we must. Father, we thank you for our offering. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for coming to teach us. Thank you for coming to empower us. Thank you for coming to release us. I believe you're releasing us from the leech. The leech that was put in our necks to worship idols. Our families have worshipped idols. And we think we are worthy with degrees and doctorates but I do worship us. But Lord, you're releasing us into the purity and the liberty of worshiping the only true God. Those young men said, let it be known, oh you devil. Even if God does not deliver us, we are not going to worship idols. We decree and declare in this church, in this church family, we shall not worship idols. We are free from the demons of Uganda, of Busoga, of, 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 of the Bachwezi. We shall not worship idols. We shall worship the living God. And our children will find liberty. And our servants will be healed. And our people will be healed of cancer. Will be healed of HIV. Impossible sicknesses that were going to bring death. Will be smitten. They will be beaten. They will be broken out of our lives. We shall bear testimony of men and women who worship the living God. We thank you, Lord. We bless you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Feel free to give. You know, when we woke up this morning, my daughter just woke up. She has been sick this weekend. She has been sick. High temperatures and what. But she woke up this morning and told Beatrice, B2, today we are going to church to worship God and to eat food. It's encounter weekend. Praise the Lord. So please don't miss this afternoon. We're going to worship God at three and eat food. Hallelujah. So second service is coming on maybe in 15 minutes or so. We're just going to take a short break and then uh, in the evening beginning at three we have a service that is starting. Hallelujah. So thank you for coming. This is our encounter weekend. And uh, we are so privileged. God has been uh, ministering to us in a very, very special way. So we are going to come together this evening. This is the month of Av. It's a month for singles. So we are praying for singles. Amen.
If you're not yet married, please come. If you're believing God for marriage, don't think about the money. Just believe God for a wedding. Come. We are going to be praying for you specifically this afternoon. Pastor Biarahanga will be here to lead us, but all the pastors are going to be here. It's going to be an awesome, awesome, awesome evening. So please come, and then we'll break our fast together. Praise the Lord. The Writers Club meets this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Only those above 13 should attend. Uh, children below 13 will have their own sessions. Hallelujah. We're good. Praise the Lord. Let us arise and share the words of the grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Yeah. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Say hello to somebody. Thank you for coming. If you want to stay behind and attend the second service, feel free. The worship was awesome. If you missed the praise and worship, you feel free to stay behind. Uh, otherwise, let's meet at 3 this afternoon. God bless you. God bless you.